Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below, the like button, the bell notification, and please leave a comment. If you want more information or if you want to book me for a consultation, the link down below, www.totalwellness2page.com. Go to my webpage and you can either book me for a consultation because there's a lot of questions that come through and it's a lot of times it's too detailed to answer the way that I could help you with. If you want more information as well, go to my webpage and download the packet, my functional medicine packet, because people are asking what service, services do you do, and it's all in that packet on my webpage. So, so thank you for doing so. Okay, I know I, I've been offline for a while. I just, my life is really busy right at the moment. So this is, so I had to take a break. However, thank you for all the questions and the comments that come through on my YouTube page. I greatly appreciate people are wondering where I'm, where I've been. So yes, I have been busy. I have a busy life as well outside of YouTube. So thank you. Okay, one of the topics I wanna to tackle is the sex hormone binding globulin. What is it? And by the way, it plays differently for males and females. So today I just want to tackle mostly on how sex hormone bonding globulin a protein affects males more in detail than females. I will do one on a female shortly. Right now I just want to tackle the males. Okay, so what is this sex hormone bonding globulin? Because oftentimes when I'm talking with males and doing a male hormone panel, this is one thing I always look at because this is a transport protein. Now, in summary, sex hormone binding globulin, it's a check engine light. Okay, is it too high, is it too low? On both sexes, if it's too low or high on females, it could be one thing. If it's too high or low on males, it could be another thing. So, start. so what is sex hormone binding globulin? What's the deal with sex hormone binding globulin, Malika, you may ask? So what is it? It's a protein that's produced by the liver. Now remember, liver health is very, very important because it's one of the main filters in conjunction with your kidneys. So if you have poor liver health, you're gonna have a plethora of symptoms and, and conditions. So let's back up the start of the domino is always the liver. It's produced by a liver that binds primarily to testosterone, DHT, dihydrotestosterone, and estradiol in order to transport it throughout the body. So it's a carrier protein that binds to hormones to carry it around the body. Now conventional medicine, often misses the importance of looking at sex hormone binding globulin in blood labs because it's conjunction with its total and free testosterone levels. Okay, so when it comes to blood labs, what do these numbers mean? What's total testosterone? What's free testosterone? What's total thyroid? What's free thyroid? What's, what is the difference between total and free? Because oftentimes the medical conventional medicine doesn't split up everything. They just say, hey, it's total. So when it comes to total testosterone numbers, the total testosterone is the amount of measurable testosterone in the system. Yeah, I have a lot of it, but what's available, what's active, what's free? That's free testosterone. Free testosterone is the amount of your total testosterone that is unbound, that is biologically active. So you could have a lot of total tests and very few free testosterone, which that you don't want. Now, how are all these hormones transported throughout the system? By a carrier protein. Most of it's bound. So there's the two carrier proteins that, that transport testosterone throughout the system is 54% of it's bound to albumin. And the other 44% is bound to sex hormone binding globulin. So sex hormone binding globulin, it binds to several, several sex hormones. It's just not bound to testosterone. With the order of hierarchy, it's bound to, it has a greater affinity to DHT, testosterone, androstendiol, estradiol, and estrone. So it binds to mostly DHT and then goes down the, down the downstream. And by the way, less than 1% of progesterone is bound to sex hormone binding globulin. That's why it doesn't really matter about, about progesterone. Okay, so in summary, Remember, the total testosterone, that's the amount that's just there. 
level from a blood draw isn't able to distinguish free testosterone and what is bound to sex hormone bonding globulin. So the numbers, if the measure of sex hormone bonding globulin is high, think about this, then you have a low free testosterone that's available to the system. Because if it's low free testosterone, then that means that the more total testosterone is bound. Let's flip it over. How about if you have low levels of sex hormone binding globulin, then you have an increase of free testosterone that's biologically active throughout the system. In certain conditions, so for females and males, so in females, females who have conditions like PCOS, hypothyroid, etc., that's where the test levels are too high compared to the estrogen levels. So for females, they'll have a low sex hormone binding globulin, which turns it's free, a lot more high free floating available testosterone. So in males, Further testing I always suggest is needed because you just can't just have this one test. So in males, if it's high, if the number is high, sex hormone binding globulin, that equates to low levels of free testosterone. Why? Because high levels of sex hormone binding globulin equates to high levels of total testosterone. Remember, total testosterone is just what's measured. You don't have a lot of free testosterone. The normal ranges vary. So for female, for women, you have anywhere from 10 to 57 nanomoles per liter. For men, look at the values. It's a bigger value range, 18 to 144 nanomoles per liter. Now, in summary, when the sex hormone binding globulins are high, it leads to more an estrogenic environment. Because remember, there's low levels of free testosterone. So when the sex hormone binding globulin is low, that leads to more an androgenic environment. So for females, it's low, it's more androgens that are being released. If it's high, it's more estrogenic environment. Remember, the function of sex hormone binding globulin is to transport sex hormones through the blood, and also sex hormone binding globulin controls the availability of sex hormones. Remember, sex hormone binding globulin that is essentially like a check engine light. If it's too high, what caused it? If it's too low, what caused it? Because remember, sex hormone binding globulin controls the amount of testosterone your body can use. It's a transport protein that is made in the liver. So remember, if you have any type of liver damage, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, if you are an alcoholic, if you're medications, anything that could cause liver damage, because sex hormone binding globulin is made in the liver, it will, you, you also will lead to abnormal sex hormone binding globulin levels because it's made in the liver. So other causes, what causes high and low levels? So what causes low levels is hypothyroid, type two diabetes due to increase in insulin. You wanna make your body less insulin resistant and more insulin sensitive. In addition, obesity or just, just overweight eating. PCOS, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, what causes increased levels? Liver disease, hyperthyroidism, eating disorders, for female hormone replacement therapy and birth control can cause high levels. Type one diabetes, medications. Now, a lot of my patients are on medications and I always say I cannot get you off of them, especially if there's certain medications that you just don't even touch. However, remember, when you're taking medications, keep in mind sex hormone binding globulin is a transport protein that is made where in the liver. Prescription medications processed through the liver, it punches holes in the liver pathway, so it will cause increased levels of, or abnormal levels of sex hormone binding globulin, which in turn, Remember, high levels of sex hormone, sex hormone binding globulin equates to decreased levels of free testosterone. So medications, antipsychotics, antidepressants, SSRIs, tricyclics, MAOI inhibitors, Xanax, tamoxifen, those are estrogen blockers, females and males who, have, who had some type of cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, so forth and so on. Yes, that's an estrogen blocker. Spirolactones, that's for blood pressure. H2 agonist, that's for a duodenal ulcer. Not stomach, duodenal. Metformin, for type 2 diabetes. 
oral contraceptants for females, that's your birth control pills, exogenous insulin for type 2 diabetics, all that will cause an increase in sex hormone, hormone bonding globulin levels. What do you do now? Now that I told you the damage, how can you repair it? Now remember, always I start off with diet. You want a high protein diet because protein in the simplest forms are what? Amino acids and peptides. What is sex hormone binding globulin? It's a transport protein. What gives you protein? Meats, fish, eggs, things of that nature. Also too, you want to increase your vegetables and watch the carbohydrates because every time you have a carbohydrate, what happens? You increase insulin. So if you have too many carbohydrates, you're going to get uncontrolled insulin. So I remember, I always say start with diet. And if you have any question of what diet that you need, Google it, look it up. I always tell my people, my, the comments, Google that information because there's no better person to, to gather research than it's you. Because I'm only one person on this side of the fence. You're over there, wherever that is, and you can Google all the information you want because it's there, it's there. So Google diet for to raise or lower sex hormone binding globulin levels. And you'll, you'll be surprised what you will find. What do you want to do? To do, remember, sex hormone binding globulin reduces testosterone availability. Now, keep one thing in mind, I, I know I'm gonna have this question, well, isn't high testosterone level good for you, for guys? Yes, but remember what you want to avoid, too high of a testosterone level will bleed over to DHT. And that is testosterone's evil twin brother because increased levels of DHT can cause other health conditions, especially baldness. So the answer is no. High testosterone levels are not always good. Okay, so what do you do? Number one, manage your stress. I know stress is very, it's out there, it's in front of our faces with everything going on in the world. However, do what you gotta do to manage stress because when you have increased levels of cortisol, yes, it does a lot of damage to the body. However, it increases your sex hormone binding globulin, which will decrease your testosterone. Control your insulin and blood sugar levels. Why? Because poor insulin sensitivity, you're now you're insulin resistant and blood sugar related metabolic functions. What happens is that sex hormone binding globulin levels become unbalanced. So definitely you want to control your insulin and the blood and your blood sugar. Okay. Estradiol balance. Yes, it could happen to men as well. So estrogen, which is predominantly a female hormone plays a role in the body's balance of estrogens and, and testosterones because what happens, estrogen dominance can occur when there's too much free testosterone bound to sex hormone binding globulin. So you want to be careful for that estrogen dominance. And yes, it could happen in men as well. Okay, thyroid function. Everything's connected to the thyroid. It, it's, a, it's a missing link. Thyroid, insulin, estrogen, testosterone, hormones, all connected because sex hormone binding globulin is a transport hormone and it's an indicator of how other systems are working. In addition, sex hormone binding globulin impacts estrogen. Estrogen impacts thyroid function. So that is another lecture altogether. Okay, supplement. Now this, there's, again, do your research. There's a lot of supplements to take that will help with the level, control the levels of sex hormone binding globulin. This is just my handful of supplements. So please don't write me and say, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And the dosage. Yes, there's a lot of things that you could take, which will help stabilize not only your hormones, how you control your insulin levels, how do you control your cortisol levels? And it's a plethora of stuff that you could take. However, this is just a handful of things that I recommend. Now remember, dietary changes. Increase your proteins because this is made by proteins. Lower your carbohydrates and sugars. Watch it because you, again, you don't want your body, you want your body to become more insulin sensitive so you could utilize the glucose. And also increase your vegetables. No one got fat off eating too much broccoli or Brussels sprouts or cauliflower. So eat all the vegetables you could, your stomach could handle because Vegetables contain minerals and vitamins that are natural. 
Exercise, dirty, dirty word, exercise. Who wants to exercise? Well, maybe, if you, maybe one of the benefits of exercise is to, it increases insulin sensitivity. So you utilize glucose more, so you control that sex hormone binding globulin levels. And, and you might just lose weight, but that's just a myth. Supplements, again, there's a lot to take. Research is needed. Boron, boron, 20 milligrams of boron daily, that will help stabilize the sex hormone and binding globulin levels. Magnesium citrate, 200 milligrams. You could take that anytime, in the morning, noon, or night. Calcium, now calcium, I always try to get calcium from the food. Because the calcium supplements, there's different types of calcium supplements, but I always recommend get it from food. Zinc, 50 milligrams. Vitamin D3 and fish oil. Now that varies according to where you are on this planet. I'm on Chicago, we have three seasons a year, and that's, I'm sorry, three months of good weather a year. So I like to get my vitamin D3 as much from the sun as possible, but I do take 10,000 IUs daily of vitamin D3. Fish oil, same thing, it all varies. Are you on the east coast, west coast, south side, north side? And again, do you, do you consume fish all the time or rarely? Fish oil definitely will help stabilize that, those levels as well. And also there's a herb, Tonkat Ali, 1,000 milligrams. This will help stabilize your sex hormone and binding globulin levels as well. Okay, so if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If, however, if they're more detailed, then I'll, directly, I'll direct you to my webpage, www dot totalwellness2page.com and book me for a consultation because I'll be more than happy to lead you in the right direction. Please subscribe down below and please share with a friend and I'll see you in the next video. Be good.